From the beginning of the 21st century only, more than a dozen strong earthquakes have been recorded. In Iran, 50,000 people were affected. In the Indian Ocean, more than 250,000 people were killed. China has had about 70,000 victims. Haiti, 220,000. In Japan, about 16,000 people died. Nepal, more than 7,000 people. More than 600,000 people died in the first 16 years of the new millennium because they were caught off guard right in their homes. Are there any technologies that could, if not exclude, at least reduce the number of victims in the future? And what can be done today to protect people from unavoidable disasters? The reason for most earthquakes is the constant movement of lithospheric plates. There are tensions at the points of contact, and this tension can accumulate gradually. This way, it accumulates a huge amount of energy. At a certain moment, when the tension reaches a critical point, an abrupt shift of plates occurs, causing wave oscillations on the surface of the Earth. If after the impact of the earthquake force, seismic resistance decreases, then it can be restored or even increased thanks to modern technologies. We are used to the fact that building structures are reinforced at the stage of creation of every detail. The most striking example is reinforced concrete. Steel fittings inside and concrete from the outside is the most common building material of the 20th century. But if there are cracks in the concrete, it's the end. The construction will not hold. But it will. And thanks to those compositional materials of the 21st century. Carbon plastic, or as it is properly called, carbon composite material, has great properties. It is stronger than steel in certain parameters. It is lighter and more durable. This material has a very high rigidity and great tear resistance. It's seen best of all in the testing laboratory. Here, reinforcing materials are tested. They are manufactured at the same enterprise, but in an adjacent room. Vladimir, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Only one question gives me some trouble. How does this thin carbon fiber become stronger than metal? What is the secret? Well, fiber, it is initially stronger than steel, when it is still synthesized in production. Well, it's hard to say. But thanks to the fact that we put it in a matrix, epoxy resin, polyester resin, or some other matrix, we can create a form, which maximizes its strength properties. We have a great opportunity to see what loads the same sized steel and carbon composite materials can hold. Can we break it? Oh, sure. Vladimir, well, to be honest, if I had not seen with my own eyes, I would not have believed that a coal plate can hold a load ten times greater than a metal plate. At first sight, there are two identical reinforced concrete beams, but this is only at first sight. This one is reinforced with carbon composite material. Now we will find out if the reinforced beam has become stronger than usual. Alevtina will help us with this. She works in this laboratory. Well, do you regularly face such problems? Yes. And how can we find out what is stronger? Now we will determine the strength by folding a reinforced and not reinforced beam. So will we fold them? We will test them on the press. On the press? Yes. It's amazing. The arc is visible now. Naha! So it is cracking.
So, we have the same conditions. We did not displace the support. The traverses are at the same distances. There are the felt pads, and Eleftina is starting the press. Let's go. The destruction of the reinforced beam occurred with a pressure of more than two tons. This is almost three times more than for a non-reinforced beam. A thin layer of something black and unclear makes concrete become three times stronger. Using a carbon kibazit to reinforce buildings and stopping armored concrete are too expensive now. But there are cases when light, modern material is the only chance. Eugene, well, look on this ramp. Signs of destruction are visible, yes? We see the consequences of atmospheric precipitation, some micro-vibration. Well, and obviously the seismic stability of these structures. Well, more precisely, their holding capacity eventually decreases. And how are these objects restored? When we are talking about the column, it is the most effective, probably appropriate and fastest way to use the carbon tape, which wraps around the column, creating a clip, and thereby restoring the original characteristics of the structure. Can you describe how this process happens? First, the column is restored to the correct geometric shape. It means we smooth the surface out with special remote compositions. Then, if necessary, we polish it. After this, we apply an epoxy binder. And then we apply carbon fiber to the epoxy binder. The process of plastic formation takes place on the structure. It will take seven days. The glue will finally harden, and this support will become even stronger than it was before. Everything took about 30 minutes. But the most important thing in this technology is that it allows you to get close to the most difficult places. And with its help, it is possible to strengthen not only individual supports, but also whole buildings. Two identical structures are installed on the test bench. The sample on the left is reinforced with carbon fiber. On each sample, more than 30 seismic sensors are installed. They will fix the movements and deformations of the building structure, caused by an artificial earthquake from three to nine points in strength. Even with the force of six points, an unprotected structure has dangerous cracks appearing, and at a nine-point earthquake, it collapsed. At the same time, the sample with external reinforcement did not receive noticeable damage. By the way, people often confuse the scales describing earthquakes. There is a Richter magnitude scale from 1 to 9. It describes the energy of earthquakes. It is wrong to say an earthquake with a magnitude of 7 on the Richter scale. But if there are points, then this is another scale from 1 to 12, and it describes the power of earthquakes. The scale shows the power of the earthquake expressed through acceleration. Simply put, this indicator tells you how quickly the ground goes from under your feet. Now we will carry out the experiment and find out at what power of the earthquake it is impossible for me to stand on my feet. So we have a mobile platform, an accelerometer, and now they will pull this platform, and I'll try to stand still. We'll see at what number of points I will fall from this platform. Well, let's try. Yes, with such an earthquake power, it is impossible to stand still. Therefore, when strong earthquakes start, you must first leave the building, and secondly, if you are on the street, it is better to sit down on the ground immediately, like this, and do not fly like this. If you cannot stand on your feet when the tremor is strong, how then are buildings designed to hold such loads? We go to the Science Center, which deals with such tasks. 
And what is the difference between, well, the buildings that are built in dangerous regions, well, from those which are built here in central Russia? We are trying to design buildings not only for the bearing capacity in the vertical plane, but also for the bearing capacity in the horizontal direction. Suppose, in this dam, yes, you can test the displacement of the Earth's crust that occurs during an earthquake, really. At this stand, we set the impact, which simulates the seismic load on a building structure or building structure. In this research center, mathematical modeling and full-scale tests for the seismic stability of a variety of constructions are conducted. Here, basically, they use the method of dynamic resonance gradually changing the frequency of vibration. Scientists reach a resonance during which the amplitude of oscillations multiply increases and the force of external influence. Many sensors are installed at the facility, which allows us to assess how the construction nodes behave at all stages of the research. Only after passing through the whole test cycle is a permission given for construction in a seismically hazardous area. The European part of Russia, well, most of it, is located on the East European Plain. It is sometimes called the Russian Plain. Moscow is located in the center of this Russian Plain, far from active seismic processes. Nevertheless, their echoes have repeatedly worried the residents of the capital. Over the past hundred years in Moscow, four earthquakes were recorded with a force of three to four points. This influence is too weak to give it any attention on the ground, but in high-rise buildings and complex objects, due to possible resonance, this factor must be considered. This is the CSK Stadium. Over two years, the participants of the World Cup have been training here. And now, this is one of the most interesting construction projects in the capital. Alexander, what are the requirements for designing such large and beautiful buildings? Well, of course, sports buildings, including our stadium, have special increased requirements for safety. First, of course, all these structures, in case of an earthquake or some other emergency, must hold their own weight. Ensure the safety of people so that people can be safely evacuated. There is a rather complicated design of our awnings above the stands. So all calculations were made regarding these structures, including wind loads. Due to the large sails, the structure can experience loads opposite to its weight. That is, like a wing, like a wing, can start to rise. This building is constructed with a large factor of safety. It can withstand earthquakes to eight points. And although the probability of such an event in Moscow is unlikely, the designers had to consider the human factor. This is a video of the football championship in Germany. The crowd is jumping and shouting something, and they literally begin to swing the platform of the stadium. And here it is clearly visible that the amplitude reaches, well, probably tens of centimeters. Big enough. But is this stadium designed for such loads? Of course, but we cannot have such a situation, because here, on these shots, the designs are clearly combined. They just went into resonance with the fans' movements and began to sway. Combined structures do not have a rigid attachment. In our situation, the stadium monolithic skeleton is based on two underground floors. Won't there be a resonance here? No, it will not arise, because they will jump like everyone on their plate, on their piece. This is a separate design. It means these longitudinal levels in steps with the interval of approximately 9 meters. This is a separate structural element. Each step, it is not even connected. It means if there is a vibration, a deformation from the vibration, it will be from a beam to a beam, and the reinforced concrete structure itself will not be able to produce resonance. It's not so easy to rock. 
Even insignificant fluctuations and movements of construction in real-time mode are recorded by a monitoring system consisting of more than 350 sensors placed at key places of the stadium. The sensors take everything into account. They are quite sensitive and therefore they record any changes that happen at the stadium. Whatever their cause is, whether it was the wind, whether it was flooded by the fans, whether there is an earthquake somewhere far away or some wave. Similar systems are installed in all high-rise buildings constructed in our country and all over the world. Accurate monitoring helps to prevent possible problems. But in addition to it, there is an important set of measures to avoid them. Does your laboratory just deal with reducing the seismic load on buildings? How can you protect the building from what was here? The principles of seismic isolation is just to separate one part of the structure from another, or the construction from the ground, which is the source of the impact. Alexander, I've noticed some interesting designs here. Is this just what makes it possible to reduce the seismic load? Here we see mainly mock-up. Prototypes of real seismic systems, which illustrate the principle of their operation. This is a rubber metal support, which is already installed in city buildings and facilities. Diameters, the dimensions of such structures, can reach as much as 2 meters. And the load is estimated to be up to 6,000 tons. If, during an earthquake, the relative movement of the building and soil is measured in millimeters, then such a support can deform to more than half its diameter. Well, that is, if this support is 80 millimeters in diameter, then the permissible displacement for such a product here is about 45 to 50 millimeters. It means it will not collapse. And accordingly, the building above won't collapse either. That's right. In our experiment, we decided to test the prototype of the new pillar created at this research center. It consists of two sites connected by elastic rods and a central column, which is rigidly attached to only one of these sites. Well, the test stand is ready. Seismic insulating stands are installed. And now we will try to recreate our scenery of a nine-point earthquake. Run it up. Seismic insulating supports cannot put the vibration down completely, but the vibration has become noticeably lower. To see this, it's enough to compare this footage with the footage from the beginning of our film. With such a simple but elegant engineering solution, we managed to lower the seismic load on our design more than two times. Earthquakes still frighten people. We aren't likely to overcome this force one day, but thanks to modern science and technology, we have learned how to resist this misfortune.